uh, this video is going to be about uh, three different anvils and three different stands and seeing the difference in rebound and uh, ring uh, on the three anvils and three stands. I think you're going to really be impressed. In fact, if you want to know how to clear uh, and quiet down a piece of railroad track, this video is for you. The anvils were used in an 18 inch piece of railroad iron. Alright, um, my anvil, I call it my anvil, 127 pounds. I really don't know a whole lot about it. It's quite an anvil to begin with. I think it's an old Peter Wright. Uh, I think it's a Peter Wright reject. I think that's the reason why there's no stamp on it. Um, there were several forging flaws in the anvil. Um, the tail end was down where the Hardy and Pritchard hole is. Uh, there was chipping on the front. But that's not the reason why I think it was a reject. But it had cracks just down uh, all the way across. It had cracks up underneath the back uh, by the Hardy and Pritchard hole. Personally, I think maybe that thing came out and some employee says, Oh, boss, let me have it. And they sent it home without stamping it with any information because they didn't want his name on it. And uh, the thing eventually made it back out into the market. And then I have a Harbor Freight 55 pound. And I'm pretty sure it's cast steel, not cast iron. But it doesn't appear to have a, uh, uh, a tool steel plate on it of any consequence. Because I heated it up. The non-magnetic held it there for a little while. Then we clenched it. And I don't see any difference in the hardness. And it didn't fly apart. So I think it's not cast iron. I think it's cast steel. But... Uh, you can see a video of that anvil when we were heating it up because that was a precursor to the anvil that you're going to see, the large anvil, 127 pounds, that you're going to see in this video. Uh, this video, that anvil is still in its regular state. All the cracks and mushroomed edges, of course, they've been ground down, but it's still flat. It's got a belly in the center and all that kind of stuff. You're not going to see that, but if you want to see somebody put a tool steel 4140 piece of plate steel and a step on an anvil, what it takes to grind it down, groove out the, the cracks, weld it up, heat it up. Uh, all right. uh, you can look for a video on uh, a reconditioning of an anvil. All right. The stands. Uh, I have a stand that I made uh, out of 6 inch square tubing, 6 inch by 3 six eight, four pieces standing up half inch plate on the bottom, half inch plate on the top, <coughs> um, one, uh, two inch wide by uh, one eighth inch thick piece of uh, flat bar that I heated and bent around the anvil and welded to the half inch plate so I could pull the top off in case I want to fill it up with sand or, or sawdust or anything like that, but uh, there's nothing in there, okay. And then a simple stump, just, uh, it's a softwood stump. I don't remember exactly what kind of uh, stump it was. It doesn't matter that much when you stand them up on the end. They're way more than what you're going to, you know, hit with your hand as far as the strength goes. And then there's a striking anvil. The striking anvil is uh, an inch and, a qu inch and three quarters, uh, 4140 tool steel, not hardened. Under that is a one inch plate of mild steel. Under that, three legs. Two inch by two inch by one quarter inch <coughs> square tubing filled up with sand and oil and then half inch plate under the bottom of it uh, three inches wide by six inches long so they're all heavy uh, anvils so I can't say that rebound doesn't make a difference on the type of stand that you use because I didn't try anything that was lightweight Okay, my anvil stand is definitely the lightest out of the bunch. It's probably equivalent to the uh, stump. But I think after the video, uh, you're going to be really interested in seeing uh, my anvil. Now, one note that is not in the video, uh, when I pull the top off, because I had cut that by hand, it wasn't perfectly straight all the way across, I laid two pieces of one by inside on top of the uh, ends of the six by six channel coming up. So one here, one here, then I put the top on it. So there is some wood 
in that stand, and possibly that's one of the reasons why uh, it's it, it quiets that railroad iron hole down the way it does. But I don't think so. Um, uh, I did it just so it was nice and solid. After you hit it a few times, everything finds its seat, you know. But anyway, uh, we'll get on to the video. The summary is this freaking thing will quiet down a piece of railroad iron. Now, my anvil's pretty quiet to begin with. 55 pound Harbor Freight anvil. Uh, it's not very noisy either. It doesn't have a ring to it. So, this thing has taken a massive amount of time, all this cutting and pasting and splitting and all that. If somebody knows the uh, Video Pad Professional by NCH Software and wants to uh, do a screen sharing session with uh, Skype or uh, TeamView or something like that, and just give me a little quick, this is the way you work this thing. I've opened it up three times and tried to do some simple stuff in there. And it just, I'm not very good at learning new software, although I've got a horrendous background in computers. I'm a master certified network engineer, worked on all kinds of Cisco shit, flew all over the world. But when it comes to video and graphic software, I don't know, I just don't understand how they put it together and do what they do. But other people pick that shit up quick. And uh, I'll make you something and send it to you in the mail, or maybe we work out some kind of deal anyway. Give me more time to put these things in. I got a bunch of videos, and uh, I haven't put them on yet because it takes a damn long to put them on. Anyway, no further ado, let's get to this video. I think you guys are going to like it. Sound definitely if you don't like the rain or get it off the damn wood. Uh, thought you guys might enjoy that. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. 